As a gamer, you'll be wanting to get the very best out of your system. And while on paper you may have all of the right things, sometimes there can be limitations, like your processor holding you back and just not allowing your GPU to work at its fullest. So for those on older hardware, you may be looking to potentially upgrade, especially if you're on an AMD system where you can simply upgrade your CPU very easily, sometimes with just a simple BIOS update. But AMD have fallen into a bit of a trap of having quite a large product stack where some models are extremely close in terms of specs and performance. So we thought we'd have a look at two of those processors today with the Ryzen 5 5600 and 5600X to see really if clock speed on your CPU can actually make a difference for the bottom line of getting the most performance out of your system when it comes to gaming. So in typical eTechnics fashion, we've put them through their paces in 42 games and three resolutions to see if paying the extra money for the X variant is worth it. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature patch motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you you realise that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits. Or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver. Thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. Okay, so let's start by talking about both Ryzen processors and kind of how they differ. And it's quite an easy one actually, because essentially they are one and the same with the same six cores and 12 threads, the same 65 watt TDP and based on the same architecture with the only difference in terms of specs coming by way of the clock speeds. While the Ryzen 5 5600 comes in at 3.5 gigahertz and a boost speed of 4.4, the 5600X just pushes a little bit beyond that at 3.7 gigahertz and 4.6 gigahertz boost. So we're talking a grand total of 200 megahertz, which doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things. Now, one way you could look at what we're doing here today is to take two processors that are essentially the same and just overclock it by 200 megahertz, which is something that's easily achievable. But not everyone has faith in their own abilities when it comes to overclocking. And for the most part, it's a bit of a dying art for the average consumer, especially when you're only talking about a 200 megahertz increase in clock speed. Now, for those users who maybe aren't confident in their abilities of tinkering within AMD's own software or their motherboard BIOS, the other option you have is to buy a faster CPU. Now, generally, a faster CPU gives faster clock speeds, maybe more cores or higher amounts of cash. But with the 5600 and 5600X, that's just not the case. They are the same, other than the clock speed on the base clock and boost clock. And considering that they launched with wildly different prices and also launching two years apart, I feel like it's something that needs investigating. Now, in terms of launching, the 5600X came to market in November 2020 for $299 and has become a popular choice for consumers and mainly gamers, hitting a sweet spot of cores, threads and clock speeds that I guess at the time wouldn't hold performance back. Then fast forward about 18 months later and the 5600 non-X came to market in April of 2022, but a much more attractive price point of $199. But as we're now in 2024, well, things have changed quite dramatically. You can now get a Ryzen 5 5600 for $134, though you can get one slightly cheaper at $124 if you don't need a box or the stock cooler. Though I think the majority of the consumer base would just pay the extra $10 or so and get the packaging and the cooler included. Now the 5600X has seen the biggest price cuts as you can now get that for $176, so only $40 more. And what I'm eager to see is if one of these chips simply cancels out the other or if there's an argument for both. And to see if CPU clock speed makes a difference when gaming, considering the extra 30% cost involved. Now for our testing, we kept all parts other than the CPU completely identical. We used the Gigabyte X570S Aorus Master with 32 gig of Kingston Fury Renegade RGB 3600 MHz CL16 memory. Also, to eliminate any form of bottleneck from our GPU, we're using the Inno3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC, which will help push each CPU as far as they can go at their stock rated clocks. 
All of our tests were done on the latest update of Windows 11 and with each system's latest respective motherboard BIOS version. As some games are CPU bound, some are clock speed bound and some are GPU bound, we put both processors through a total of 42 games to get the very best idea as to what the differences are in performance. We'll be looking at 16 individual game data charts today before taking a look at overall averages and cost per frame to see what would be the better buy out of these two CPUs. Now, if you do want to see all of the individual charts for all of the games, we will be putting them up on our Patreon, where you'll not only get access to them, but you'll get a ton of other cool exclusive benefits too. And it helps support us like you wouldn't believe. Also, I do want to throw in a little caveat that because these CPUs are so close in terms of specs, only being separated by the clock speed, you still have CPU binning coming into play. Though, in theory, the 5600X should, for the most part, be faster due to that process. So some of the results may look a bit odd. Due to that, we have verified them over and over and over again. And that's also why you may see higher performance at 1440p in some of the results due to clock speed behavior and limitations of the game, where being clock speed bound can come into play. So no, the data isn't wrong. It's just on occasion being faced with a wall in terms of performance. Also, of course, we factored in margin of error results and anything that did potentially seem like an outlier was retested multiple times to validate the data. So with that covered, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. So kicking things off with a plague tale and at 1080p on the ultra preset, the 5600X manages to pull 4% ahead, which sounds good, but considering the extra cost involved, it does create an argument that the gain just isn't good enough. Then as we move up in resolution, the margin shrinks to just 2% at 1440p, and at 4K, where we're now GPU bound, both processors come within a margin of error 1 FPS in favor of the 5600 non-X. Moving over to Baldur's Gate 3, and again, we're seeing a performance uplift going to the 5600X, but we're still only seeing progression of around 4%. So still nice to see, but nowhere near the extra cost involved in buying the X over the normal 5600. 1440p sees the same margins as 1080p of around 4% for those wanting to utilize a higher resolution, but 4K sees the margin drop to just 3%. But as we can see across all resolutions, Baldur's Gate 3 is extremely limited with both of these processors. Call of Duty scaled much better through the resolutions, and here at the more limited 1080p resolution, we find a small 2% difference between the two processors, which could be argued as margin of error. As we increase the resolution to 1440p, the gap between both CPUs does increase, now back to 4%, and the same at 4K, so really on the cusp of margin of error again, though at 4K we're now more reliant on the GPU than the CPU. Cyberpunk sees our largest variance yet, with the 5600X pushing out 7% more frames overall, and 8% in terms of the low figures. Then, as we go up to 1440p, both CPUs are now evenly matched, though the 5600 non-X does come in marginally better in the 1% lows, but retesting over and over could see these results constantly trade places. Then, at 4K, we're again talking almost identical results, separated by just a single FPS. As we crank up the settings with ray tracing at both 1080 and 1440p, we are extremely CPU limited, and we see no differences to the averages on both processors. We do still find the 5600X coming in the stronger of the two by 5%, but at 4K things settle down as both CPUs match each other at 39 FPS. F123 will always give stupidly high performance figures, that's the nature of the game. And with that, there are differences between each processor, but they're so negligible that there really isn't anything worth talking about other than the fact that we're clearly limited with performance, as the results outside a margin of error don't change as we move up in resolution. As we move up to the ultra high preset with ray tracing enabled, we start to see some better scaling through the resolutions, though 1080p and 1440p are still very close due to being CPU bound. Even with the restrictions, we are still seeing the 5600X coming out the faster of the two, with a 4% uplift at 1080p, a smaller 2% at 1440p, and identical results in both the averages and lows at 4K. But what's more interesting is how the 5600 seems to consistently give better lows, even with a less average when comparing the two processors. Far Cry 6 also has limitations which you'd only see clear up with a more powerful CPU or an X3D CPU, but does still give data that shows the 5600X is the superior processor due to its increased clock speed. At 1080p it comes in 5% faster overall, while 1440p improves upon that slightly with a 6% margin in favour of the 5600X. 4K then sees things narrow slightly with just 3% between them, but as said, we're still severely bound at every resolution. 
The limitations still rear their ugly head when ray tracing is turned on, but do scale somewhat through the resolutions, with the 5600X consistently coming out the stronger of the two. Though again, we're only talking around 5% of 1080p and 1440p, and then 3% of 4K, which still doesn't strengthen the argument given the extra cost of buying the 5600X. Hogwarts Legacy saw some gains at 1080 and 1440p at between 2 and 3%, while 4K came in identically with a 1fps difference in the lows. So again, we're still being limited quite dramatically. But Hogwarts is quite a CPU intensive game anyway, especially in Hogsmeade, which is the area that we test in. Hogwarts with ray tracing enabled comes in with identical figures at 1080p in both the averages and the lows, while 1440p does see a small variance of just under 5%, so really on the cusp of margin of error. As we move up to 4K, that difference disappears and now comes in identically, but the 1% low figure is ever so slightly stronger on the 5600X. Spider-Man again shows limitations on both processors, though the 5600X still comes in the stronger of the two, thanks to its increased clock speeds. At 1080 and 1440p, we see a healthy uplift of 7%, whereas moving up to 4K has that margin increased to 11%, which is definitely closer to where you'd want it to be based on the extra cost that the 5600X warrants over the 5600 non-X. Turning on ray tracing sees the performance drop as expected, but we're still severely limited on both processors. At each resolution, again, the 5600X is a consistently faster processor, where it pushes out 6% more performance at all three resolutions. The only way to break through that barrier again would be upgrading to a 5800X 3D or something higher end from either AMD or Intel. Ratchet and Clank is next up and at both 1080 and 1440p we're severely limited by each processor, though at both resolutions we do see very small variances between each processor. At 1080p the 5600X comes in faster by a single FPS and the same at 1440p, while 4K comes in identically with only a single FPS difference in the lows. With ray tracing turned on at 1080p, the margin does grow slightly with the 5600X sporting a 7% lead over the cheaper non-X chip. 1440p still sees the X in front, but the gap has narrowed slightly to just under 5%, whereas 4K sees that margin increase once again, now with 8% between the two CPUs in favour of the 5600X. Lastly, in Starfield, it's a pretty consistent set of results. We're very CPU limited across all three resolutions with both of these CPUs, though the 5600X with its 200 MHz faster clocks does edge a 2% better set of results across the board. But at such a small amount, it can be attributed to a simple margin of error win, showing that speed doesn't make that much of a difference, if any, in this title. So I think it's safe to say that the 5600X, while it did show some good uplifts here and there, for the most part, we're talking up to 4% in most games that we looked at, which for the extra cost involved, while it doesn't sound like much at just $40, that does equate to an extra 30%, which when you factor in that you'd be paying 30% more to get 4% more performance, the numbers just, well, don't add up. Now to get a better idea as to how things are, we tested both processors across 42 games in total, and again at three resolutions. This should give a better idea as to how things are as some games are CPU bound, some are clock speed bound, and some are GPU bound. So this really just gives a more rounded look at things. It's here where at 1080p we're essentially quite far away in terms of money, as the 5600X comes in just 3% better in terms of performance, but it's still 30% more expensive. Though we have recently seen the 5600X drop down to around $155, which makes the argument somewhat better, but still not great. At 1080p, where the CPU is arguably the most important factor, the cost per frame comes in a pretty staggering 21% cheaper on the 5600 non-X, showing that the 5600 is the better value of the two. At 1440p, the value stays around the same with 3% between the two processors in favour to the 5600X in terms of overall performance, which in turn still shows that the 5600 non-X is the better bang for buck overall. This is further shown in the cost per frame where the 5600 comes in again 21% cheaper per frame when compared to its bigger brother, the 5600X. Then at 4K where the GPU takes over the majority of the load and the processor is less important, we're then only seeing a measly 2% more performance for the extra 200 megahertz. This equates to the 5600 coming in 22% less per frame and further cementing its value for money proposition in comparison. So I think we've proven in our small selection pool of processors that speed doesn't always equate to huge amounts of extra performance. Depending on the game, you are going to be limited by CPU speed in some instances, while other games, especially at lower resolutions, will see you just limited by the CPU in general, being a mixture of core count, clock speed, and just general IPC limitations. 
Maybe in the future, we'll take it further and overclock a processor to more extreme levels to see if we can get even more performance out of it. Though, as we've shown ourselves before, overclocking, and as I mentioned earlier, is a bit of a dying art. And the likes of Precision Boost Overdrive would be more than enough to help you along in trying to get the most performance out of your hardware. Also, I have to do this, to play devil's advocate, it is hard to ignore the likes of the Core i5-12400F, which we've seen lately coming in as low as $137, which considering it does have lower performance when compared to the 5600X, it could offer up an even better value proposition. Because yes, less performance, but also less money. So let me you know, know if that's something that you wanna see in the near future. Maybe even looking at the newly released 14400F could be an interesting one because while it is more expensive, it should offer up quite a lot more performance, at least in theory. And yeah, it's something that we can put to the test and find out exactly how much extra performance. Now, what we actually set out to do today, which did come with its fair share of problems due to the performance being so similar to each other and margin of error showing up on a constant basis, was to see if speed really makes a difference. And well, I think it's safe to say that while it does, the gains that you're likely to see just aren't worth it. Sure, you could overclock your CPU to net some gains, but you're going to sacrifice when it comes to temperatures and potentially higher power draw. And though it is very, very negligible, the longevity of your processor. Now, for those who aren't keen on overclocking, I think it's clear to see that the 5600 is the better buy when compared to the X. So that will at least save you some money if that's what you're you know, looking at. For me, I'd be going for the 5600 if I was toying between the two, or as mentioned, something from Intel. Or probably even the wiser choice could come down to getting a 5800X3D and blowing them kind of all out of the water. Though of course, that's then gonna cost you a little more money. And I get it, not everyone's got huge amounts of money to splash around and you may be on a budget. That's expected. So there we have it. Another one kind of wrapped up. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Making it, I have to admit, was a bit of a nightmare. And we will have a video going through why that was the case in kind of an upcoming one. So make sure you're subscribed for that because benchmarking is not easy. And yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. Also, if you love what we do, then you can help support us over on Patreon where you'll get access to all of our individual charts along with tons of other really cool stuff like exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, a super special area on our Discord, which I'm on every day and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.